My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome back to Railway Empire. And today we're going to play through the Commodore scenario, which, in my experience, is probably one of the hardest scenarios available in the base game, and possibly in the DLCs as well, because one of the tasks, in order to get a golden tick, it is really, really difficult, and you are reliant on a fair bit of luck. So let's get on and set up the game. We're going to go for the usual setup, very hard AI and manual pause mode. And in my experience, you you probably can do this task with normal if you are lucky, but you do need a big slice of luck. So manual gives you a big advantage here. So you pay the, the score penalty, but as we know, that does get offset with this very hard rate in here. Uh, the competitors don't really actually do much in this scenario. They don't seem to expand at all, really. So you don't really need to worry about that. All it's going to do is make it harder to buy them out insofar as they're going to cost you a little bit more to purchase their company. But as we'll see, that won't be a problem, provided, of course, we can hit that first objective uh, and get the golden tick. Because if we don't do that, then buying our competitors becomes irrelevant. So we are going to go for the engineer for this one, for the rapid expansion that he provides thanks to the cheaper locomotives and for this one here. Because the task that we have to do is transferring 1,000 passengers from New York to Buffalo without stopping within two years. Uh, that's to get the golden, the golden tick mark for this one. As we can see it's right here. We got by 1853 to get the green tick mark. However, to get the golden tick mark, we need to do it by the end of 1851. So that's two years, 24 months to do this. And the reason the engineer is useful here is because by putting the maintenance buildings in straight away, you're not going to get any of those breakdowns due to bad condition. And those breakdowns, especially if they're on these trains here, can be absolutely killer because they'll just clog everything up, slow it down, and it really can be the difference between hitting this target and not. So let's make a start then, shall we? So we're going to start by heading up towards Albany from New York. So we'll put a small station in the city of New York. And we're going to put this right on the edge of New York. Just here. And include the, the maintenance building as we just discussed a few moments ago. And then we're going to put one in Albany. And we'll put that, we'll put that right on the edge as well. Why not? Like so. And again construct the maintenance building there and then we're going to track this like so let's just see if we can save a bit of money here how cheap can we get this i saw 67 there can we get back to 64 that will do so it's a steep gradient on the bridge however we're going to keep that bridge single tracked and our double track is going to come in just prior to the bridge in fact let's have it come in on the flat section there there we go. So our trains aren't stopping on a 12% gradient. They're stopping on a nice flat stretch of track. So supply tower on that line. This is going to be an automatic line, even though we could go passenger and mail. We are going to keep it automatic. And we're going to run the, the Philadelphia, of course, because that's the only local we have available. And we'll put four trains on. So we'll have two that originate in Albany and two that originate in New York. And then we're going to immediately press on and head from Albany to Syracuse. And again, set the station right on the edge of town as much as you can here. And do the same in Syracuse. Like so. And again, just to ensure you do put those maintenance buildings in on all of your stations. They are free of charge, so it's worthwhile doing. You don't, you're not paying for them after all. And yep, 75,000 for that is fine. We don't have any bridges here, so we can double track right up to the platform in essence, like so. Put down your signals and your supply towers, of course. I'm going to put our supply tower there for this one. Yep, that should be fine. And the reason that's offset will become apparent a little bit later. And again, we're going to set up an automatic line between these two cities and again we're going to run four locomotives with two starting in opposing cities like so 
and once again we're going to put another station in Syracuse right on the very edge if we can right about there with the maintenance building of course and we're going to do the same over here in Buffalo and again we're going to put it right on the edge as much as we can so there maintenance building and we're going to track this into Syracuse and what we're going to do is going to run this through this contour band here just to avoid earthworks and the likes we are going to have to cross over into a separate contour band at this point so this is the uh, the contour band we want to be in in order to connect into the city itself let's bring that down a bit and could we just straighten that up just a touch yes we can 86,000 for that one no problem so this line does have that big kink out there which is fine these don't need to be classed as express or anything so if they're a little longer than usual then that's fine supply tower just there and same again with four trains two in either city and again setting them as automatic trains as well there we go the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the bonds just to free up some extra starting capital we're now going to expand that station and we're going to run this from Buffalo to New York however we we are going to say we are going to double track it but we're not going to follow that kink out there we want this to run a little bit more directly not you know not straight shot in it but if we can cut out some of these excess corners here then that's going to help obviously we are going to bypass the cities where possible which is possible at all the cities of course and then run it down there now that's saying 344,000 we can reduce that and we do want to play about with the gradients here just to take off some of the worst of these gradients to keep our trains going a little faster and of course we want to get rid of these unnecessary bridges that we have okay so we've got that track to 302,000 through some manipulation of our track points and the heights of our track so we'll accept that we'll then expand this station in New York as well now we're not going to be able to afford to double track this of course because well, we don't have the money and we've already taken out both available bonds however what we can do is get the double track ready to go 266,000 for this second track here which is perfectly fine so we'll leave that in the background and we'll just let the game run until we accumulate the money that we need to pay for this uh, this second set of track into the city of Buffalo. Just while we're waiting for that, let's talk about our research. What we're going to beeline for are any researchers or any techs that provide us with a boost to the amount of passengers we have in our cities. So we're going to go for express trains and then we're going to come down this way. We're going to get protective wall and newspaper ads. All of those three techs provide an extra 8% a piece. So that takes you to an increase of 24% in total. And that is really going to help when it comes to the amount of passengers we have coming from New York to Buffalo. So we're nearly at the 266,000 we need to pay for this next stretch of track that we're waiting for. In the meantime, we are going to employ and auto assign any train personnel who become available. They'll be useful later on. There's the double track now in place. We want to get that in place as quickly as possible and get it done by February is not too bad at all. So now we're going to put in the signals along the entire stretch of track, making sure that after every supply tower, we put down extra signals. So we don't need any extra supply towers here. We have three, which is going to be more than enough. And then what we're going to do, we're going to set up a line, which is passenger and mail only from New York to Buffalo, prioritizing passengers. We're going to use obviously the Philadelphia. We don't have a choice in that matter. And we're going to 
use the dining car to boost the passenger rating of these trains and we're also going to see if we can get any any staff members who reduce the maintenance requirements of our trains and assign them to these ones because the fewer breakdowns we can have on these trains the better as we saw there we don't have any at the moment so we're now just going to keep duplicating these trains but try and make sure they're reasonably well spaced out so we'll give the trains time to depart we have a stoker here who does reduce maintenance requirements by 20% so we'll assign him to that train there on the New York Buffalo line and again wait for the train to just maybe get level with this industry here before we set the second one on the way or not the second one but the the next train on the way and we're looking for a total of around about 10 between 8 and 12 and the reason I have such a margin of error there 8 to 12 is because it really does depend on the amount of or what personnel you have what freelancers become available to you if you are lucky and you're able to secure the services of some promoters and some market criers then you can do it with eight in my experience however if you're unlucky and you don't get those uh, market criers and promoters coming through then you need about 12 so we're going to go for 12 to start in fact I might even go as far as 14 let's just pause it while we do our tech so the first one is going to be express trains uh, yes, as I was saying, yeah, if you're not getting those freelance staff make themselves available to you, then it can be it can be very, very, very tight, a very close run thing, getting those 100,000 shipped in time. We'll get creative accounting because that saves us 100 innovation points, and it means that the next technology that we unlock will be the protective wall for that 8% bonus to passenger numbers. Okay, there we are. That's 14 trains running between New York and Buffalo, which is more than enough for now. Who do we have here? Another stoker who reduces maintenance requirements. So we'll pick any train on this run and assign that stoker to it. Okay, that's that done. What are, the other things we're going to want to do here, we're going to want to put a museum in New York. That encourages more city growth. More city growth means more passengers. We're going to put a tourist site in Buffalo once we're able to and we are going to supply Buffalo with as many of the raw resources as it needs in order to help that to grow because the higher demand fulfillment you have in Buffalo then the more people you have wanting to travel to the city. So to achieve that what we're going to do is we're going to expand the station. We have plenty of money here now. Well we have enough money here. I'm going to put a small station at this corn farm here, Walker Estate. And then we're going to run a line that runs alongside our passenger line, but doesn't merge into our passenger line, into that new platform there. 127,000 for that. And then we'll start bringing in the corn, we'll bring in the grain, the cattle, the logs, and the sugar over here. And that should be enough to keep Buffalo ticking over nicely in the background. How much was it? 127. Okay, so we're halfway there. Syracuse has expanded. Now what we want Syracuse to produce is a weaving factory. Now we don't really have the capital available to do that ourselves. So we are reliant on the AI giving us that, uh, that industry. However, what we can do to try and encourage them is expand that station there and connect in this cotton plantation here at Taylor Farm. So let's just delete that track and bring you in like so. And then hopefully this will encourage the AI to put down the, uh, the weaving factory in Syracuse because then when this starts producing cloth ideally we want buffalo that industry to be a tailors a dressmakers and if that's the case then we can supply cloth into buffalo which is going to hit that demand fulfillment and then the dresses that buffalo provides it's also going to help its own development and it can obviously feed into syracuse as well so there's buffalo's expansion there let's just get this double tracked and some trains running 
and then we are leaving it to the uh, to the lap of the gods in order for this city to produce a weaving factory so let's get this running a full load please now it's not going to depart at the moment because there's no demand for cotton and if buffalo doesn't give us the the industry we're hoping for then there'll never be a demand for cotton if that transpires and if that's the case then we will just delete this track and this station so now let's just go back to this this line we were setting up here from Walker Estate into the third platform 128,000 that's fine I think it's a little bit more than we had it previously but we can live with that so yes thankfully Buffalo uh, sorry Syracuse has gone for a weaving industry now that should encourage Buffalo to go for a tailoring manufactory which is going to help as I just said there because we're going to supply the materials into Buffalo in terms of the cloth there we go there's the money for the track to Walker estate then we want to double track it of course which again we're not going to be able to afford it straight off the bat 125,000 to double track that one so again it's just waiting around for the money to build up we have a connection bonus at this sugar plantation right here which is going to be quite useful for us because we are going to bring sugar into Buffalo so that will give us a nice $114,000 cash injection there for now we want to get this line set up and running so put a couple short signals there we already have a supply tower so we've saved money on that but of course we want to make sure we have signals after the supply tower there and now we can set up a line from Walker Estate into Buffalo with a full load and because this is shipping food we will use the refrigerator car here for the extra 20% income from the uh, from the transportation fees and we'll have four trains there so the next thing we're going to do is another station in Buffalo uh, with a link into this sugar farm right here so let's get that small station down first of all ready and we're going to put it on this side because eventually we're also going to connect into the city of Toledo over to the west so having it on the west side of the city will save on track lane costs because the route is that little bit shorter research we are going to now go for package deliveries and then with view to get in the newspaper ads next we can now put down our station at the sugar plantation on the outskirts of buffalo and again make sure we have that maintenance building included and hopefully we can afford this straight away it's only a short run yes 19,000 and that's good as that nice cash injection there we will double track it even though it's a reasonably short line and we'll do the short signal trick there although we don't need too many because we're not going to have many trains on this line so set up a line from there to there that's fully loaded using the Philadelphia and the refrigerator car and I think just two of those is going to be enough for what we need to do the next thing we're going to bring in is this grain just here so set up a station there with the maintenance building and do the nice short connection I was going to say easy but clearly it's not being that easy because it's been awkward and let's have in fact let's just go for that it's only a short bridge that it's given us so we can we can swallow that cost quite nicely 18,000 there we go didn't take us long to get to that little uh, little goal ah we've done the signals the wrong way there that's okay we can get away with that let's get up two trains between these two again we want them fully loaded and of course we want the refrigerator cars for the extra 20% revenue and now we can put the supply tower down we'll put it just come on come on we'll put it there then there we go okay so that's grain and sugar and yep that's it grain and sugar being brought in a speed boost engineer we'll 
take and just auto assign. Buffalo still hasn't got, uh, received its second industry yet, but that's okay. The next thing we want to bring in is the, uh, the are the logs and the cattle into Buffalo. Although we also want to connect it into Toledo sooner rather than later. One of the objectives, of course, is to connect five cities by the end of 1851. So in order to get the golden tick mark, you want to do that by the end of 1850. And we're already in October, so we don't want to overlook that and miss out on a very easy golden check mark by getting sidetracked. So 159,000, which we are going to be able to accumulate by the end of the year quite comfortably. And as soon as we've done the line, even though it's not going to be double tracked, it's going to tick off that task for us. And we can then turn our attention back to growing the city of Buffalo. There we go. Now, because that's sharing a platform, we're going to get rid of that stretch of track. And it doesn't remove that check mark there. Let's just pause it while we look at that. So we don't need to worry about reconnecting it or anything like that. Because what we want to do now is expand this station twice because we want two lines coming in one bringing logs one bringing cattle now of course buffalo has a meat producing industry within its uh, city limits so having the the cattle brought in first makes a little bit more sense to me so that's what we're gonna do so we have three platforms available now at this station so we want to connect to platform number three because platform number two is going to connect to the logging industry and platform number one is going to connect to Toledo when we get that set up or reset up in a few moments time. But for now we want to get Buffalo growing as quickly as we can. Okay, more research. So it is newspaper ads now. There we go. Making sure to pause it every time I have to change something just to give us every possible advantage. Engineers and security guards okay we'll take both of those but we'll just automatically assign them to whatever train the game deems most appropriate okay we need 40,000 for this line so in the meantime I'm just going to start the trains running in the background or at least one train running in the background because at least that can start chipping away at our income a saboteur is of no use to us Neither is a professor. The innovation points are worth more than the cash injection that they provide. Okay, there is the double track now in place. So we're going to have to put the signal work in. A couple of short ones down here. And now we can think about duplicating this train as well. And having two run on that line. We want a supply tower when we can afford it. There we go, so let's get our supply tower down. Oh, you, why would you do that? Well, that just doesn't make any sense at all. You could have had a weaving industry because we've already given you, well, we could have given you cloth from Syracuse. <sighs> Sometimes the AI, it, it just befuddles me and we really aren't gonna be able to afford to make the change for them just because of the increased costs that you pay as the engineer for industries so hopefully that's not gonna stymie buffalo's growth too much although i dare say it will because they're now going to demand cotton so we're going to have to think about getting cotton brought in because it's going to be cheaper to bring in cotton than it is to purchase that industry demolish the industry and then relay a more appropriate industry but never mind these things are sent to challengers so anyway we can bring in the logs into buffalo that's that's straightforward enough there we go and we want a supply tower uh, we will go for that if we can get the money before the the auction expires so it's 35,000 because then when we bulk replace our locomotives it's gonna cost us a lot less get the supply tower I mean, thankfully, Buffalo is still registering growth, although demand satisfaction is quite low, as we see there, 62%. Another stoker who reduces maintenance requirements, so we will assign that to one of the trains on this line. So you will do. There we go. 
so we did win that yeah we won the auction there which is great now what we're gonna do there's nothing else in the immediate vicinity of buffalo that we could bring in we don't want to connect this cotton farm and I'll show you why a little bit later hmm so what we're gonna do here then is put down a second station at Taylor Farm and connect this in and it can just share this line or it can share the platform over here I think or maybe the logging platform yeah so that's gonna cost us quite a bit of money Ah, market cryer that's perfect 36,000 to employ that market crier and we want them to promote comfort that increases passenger numbers of course how are we doing in Buffalo well to be fair as long as we get above 60,000 so we can get the tourist site for the increased passengers wanting to travel to the city then we don't really need to care or worry too much about whether we're getting cotton in because once we've hit this task here we can remove the tourist site and replace it with a museum which will guarantee Buffalo gets to 70,000 without too much hassle. So there's the tourist site, so that's going to help on that front. An engineer will hire and auto assign. In terms of our next set of research, we're going to go for the caboose. The caboose will be useful when it comes to setting up our express line from Toledo to New York which I think we want to start planning out sooner rather than later although we're not going to afford that for quite a while I've just noticed here a lot of our trains that are our passenger trains down here they are quite short so we can afford to put some short signals down to get them queued up as close to the New York station as possible so they're not having to travel as far when it's their turn to come into the platform so a little bit of min max in there but every little certainly does help see now we can fit five trains in this block here rather than i think we only had about two or three previously so it just means they can get in that little bit faster who's got the random breakdown oh it's you that's fine how are we doing on that task so 550 um we can still do that it's sh well hopefully we can we now have enough money to track into Toledo anyway so we'll redo that and we'll use that vacant platform there and we'll just have it run on this contour line here just to make sure we're not paying for unnecessary earthworks and bridges where we can avoid it yeah that'll be fine 170,000 we can afford the cost of a double track and then we can immediately get some trains running between these two cities as well there we go so let's put in these signals and we'll put a, a pair of supply towers on this one because the the journey length is quite long and then we're going to set up an automatic line between these two cities it seems that every city under the sun wants to produce cloth which is quite strange but there we go and then do the same in reverse with three locomotives and there we go uh, we have a connection bonus of 140,000 for Pittsburgh now given how close it is and we have some tracks nearby I think what we're gonna do is just cheekily connect into the back of that station there for the 140,000 bonus that'll do you have achieved significant so that's that task taken care of we have some more tech to unlock hmm I think we'll go for that one next and hope and pray for either an auction to get one of the next train techs or a spy to steal one from our competitors so we can get the third tech that we need for the Rensselaer because saving up for 200 to get the Dragon and then another 100 to get the Rensselaer is going to take quite a while of course. Let's see how we're doing over 600 now just which is nice let's see here ah a spy perfect that's what we want so we'll send you off to Roger Smythe doesn't matter who we send it off to of course 
Now, what I'm tempted to do here is put in, because we have the money, one of those, is that reset? No, it's only reset one train, is one of these smart stations, if you will, these stations with the signaling control, and one of the ones that has four platforms, like this. Now, have our trains automatically recalculated their routes? Yes, they have. And the reason we've done this is this means we can get more trains on platform loading and unloading at once. Although, as we can see, you know, yes, you're still connected to the right station. Yeah, so rather than having five or six trains queuing up here, we can have three or four trains picking up the passengers simultaneously. And that's going to help the, the flow through, the throughput on our trains here. So we got the dragon there, as we can see. So we'll replace all of our locos with the dragon now. Security guard, we'll take an auto assign. That does mean our next tech will be the Rensselaar. Could we do the same in Buffalo with the station and signaling control? Will we have enough space to do that? Um, I think so. What other... You know, we have that and that coming in as well. Uh, but we don't have a queue here of trains waiting to get into the platform at Buffalo. So I think we're going to be fine. Although, now that they're flowing out of New York a little faster, perhaps we will start getting the bottleneck over here. So I think, yes, we will do that. So as soon as that train from New York has... How many passengers have you got? One. Yeah, so what we'll do is, as soon as that train departs, we'll now do that. And yeah, it's going to lose this train here, or reset this train here. But so be it, as well as that train there. But overall, it's a, a, a net gain, if you will. So it's worthwhile doing. So if we can get that lined up nicely. Uh, let's obviously have the maintenance building back. And I don't think I did that at New York, so we need to make sure we go ahead and rebuild the maintenance shed at New York there we go that's everything connected in without any issues did we put the maintenance building down no we didn't so let's do that that's better now hopefully all of our trains here are happy and they're not confused they shouldn't be it should automatically reassign them to the new station and again it just means they can have multiple trains dropping off their passengers at any one time so up to 832, we're in, uh, just ticking into July. There's the next tech, which of course is going to be the Rensselaar. And what we're going to do is go to our engine shed and any locomotive on a passenger and mail line, which is just the 14 between the two cities, is going to use the Rensselaar for the increased passenger rating. At this point now, we are going to put a second station in New York City. And this is where our express train from Toledo is going to be running into. So we also need to expand our station at Toledo. And then if we did a straight shot, it's going to cost us, I'm going to guess, about four million. Uh, look at that, pretty much bang on four million. But that's not what we're going to do, of course. We are going to fine tune how we're running into this city here. So we're going to come out there. Now here we do want to be careful of gradients. So in some respects it is it, it's arguably better to pay a little bit extra for the tunnels and the bridges. Provide, you know, just to keep your gradient down. And what we're aiming for is not going above 4% I think. Right, if you come down there that's going to save us some money on another tunnel. And we're still within that 4% gradient tolerance. Yes, that's all good on that side of the river. We've got to have a bridge there. There's no two ways about it. Although we can get rid of one of the bridges. And you are going to tunnel through this. And we're just going to delete this line here because it's kind of in the way. And you're going to do that. 1.8 million. Well... We need it to be an express train, so we'll wait and we'll just pay pay what it takes. 
However, we can play about with a bond market here, and that's put us a little bit closer to the 1.8 million target. Now, we don't need to double track this, so that's fine, but we do want enough supply towers that the train doesn't start to slow down, of course. So we don't need to save up for double tracking between Toledo and New York. We only need one train running it, as long as it's an express train, that's all we're interested in. And in fact, if you're trying to get an express line set up, then arguably it is better to have one train, because if you have one train that's slightly faster, because of, say, you know, the staff that you have employed on that train, uh, then it's going to... You, you could get stuck behind some of the, the trains that aren't receiving the same bonus as that train and you're going to lose that express rating or you, you could lose the express rating so yes one train is fine so supply tower one at about halfway and then one on the final third that should be fine set up the rail line then this is passenger and mail only from Toledo to New York doesn't matter what you pick up we want the Rensselaer, we want the Caboose, and then we want to go through and take any staff who give us a speed boost. So you give us 8%. We have you who also gives 8%. And then we don't need these, but if we can get a conductor or a security guard who provide a working bonus to our staff, then we'll take them, but we don't. What we will check, however, is whether or not any of our engineers will boost him because while we're going to lose two percent on the engineer as you can see it's a net gain due to the boost we get from our stoker so you boost and yeah so you're the one we want jeremiah black because over time of course you will level up to level three and go to eight percent yourself so yeah that's what we're doing here now because we've got a different engineer we might have a conductor, and we do have a conductor who boosts our engineer. So let's employ, or let's reassign that conductor. And then again, we may have a security guard who boosts the engineer. No, we don't. But there we go. So it's all about playing about with your various members of staff there to get as much of bonus here as you possibly can. And an extra 27%, a 51 mile an hour Rensselaer is a nice increase indeed. So what we'll do then is the personnel, uh, they, that engineer we had who we assigned and reassigned, we'll put them back on whatever train they want to go on. We don't need a saboteur. How are we doing? Ah yes, look at that, 978, 987. So yeah, we're going to get there quite comfortably. We have until the end of the year. And that will guarantee the golden check mark for this one. Research, the next thing we're going to go for is the Rogers American for the increased speed on that train. Successfully established a major passenger line. There we go. Completed by September the 4th of 1851. So we had quite a few months remaining to achieve that. So that's a really, really, really strong result. So what we can do now is we can demolish the tourist site in Buffalo and replace it with a museum to get Buffalo growing to 70,000 which it will do without any further input from ourselves and we can instead turn our attention to ensuring this one is ticked off and then this one these ones are relatively straightforward to do what we're going to do but it's going to be in the next episode is just a lot of rapid expansion so we're going to head all the way down the east coast and then through some of these southern cities here, such as Augusta, Atlanta and Montgomery, before heading back up this way. We're going to run automatic lines between all of those, or if needed, passenger and mail, for example, between Washington and Baltimore because of the conflicting industries. Likewise, Norfolk and Wilmington, uh, Wilmington and Charleston, Charleston and Charlotte, and so on and so forth and using all that money that that's going to create for us in the background and it's going to be a lot of money we're going to be able to buy out our competitors with relative ease so around about here is where we're going to leave this episode i was hoping we'd get this task unlocked at the same time before we finished off but uh well maybe when it gets back to new york it will achieve its rating of express train but we shall see 
so we'll let this train get back to New York hopefully like I said it's classed as an express we'll send the spy to work on Roger Smythe because why not nope you're not going to constitute as an express okay so we'll we'll look at that in the next episode we still have plenty of time in which to do that uh, by the end of 1853 is where we're where we're looking for for that one so plenty of time this one we have until the end of 1853 as well so plenty of time to do that and we will do that quite comfortably we're about halfway there at the minute a little under halfway so not too bad at all this one we have until the middle of 1852 i believe and again we're very close and now we've put the museum down in buffalo we can already see we've got that growth being generated so that one's not going to be a problem either so there we are ladies and gentlemen i hope you found this episode enjoyable and potentially useful as i said that task there transporting those 1000 passengers can be very very challenging and i think this because i tried it before we were doing a direct line like this way through all this countryside between new york and buffalo and that was a very hit and miss but going this way seems to be a uh, a, a bigger guarantee of success especially is especially if i should say you replace your stations with these signal control stations in both new york and buffalo as soon as you are able so then you're not having the trains queue up for miles slowing down the uh, the passenger transfer process other than that the other tips i can give you for making sure you achieve buffalo and new york the uh, the passenger transfer is getting any market criers who become available focusing on techs that boost your passenger numbers like we did such as express trains protective walls and newspaper ads putting on your dining cars to boost the passenger rating of your locomotives getting the fastest locomotives you have for that line again to boost that rating setting them to prioritize passengers over mail which we did and also we didn't get one in this playthrough but you may find yourselves with the uh, with a with a promoter available if you get a promoter put the promoter in buffalo the higher population you have the more people who want to travel there and like we did as well make sure you get buffalo to at least 60,000 so you can get that tourist attraction put in as well which is also going to help in terms of the amount of passengers that you have wanting to head in this way plus of course having a higher population by providing the growth uh, does mean more passengers want to come into buffalo uh, as well so you get a, you get a that's a double-edged bonus right there so it's very worthwhile doing and you have a lot of required industries nearby you have the cattle the logs the grain the sugar and the corn all reasonably close by and relatively straightforward to connect to so it is well worth doing so all that remains for me to say then ladies and gentlemen is as always take very good care of yourselves it's tata for now